Good evening and thank you for joining us on NCA Nationwide. I'm Nadja Atutijani with updates from across the nation. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced 216 new cases of COVID-19 in the country on 18th May 2020. The breakdown shows that Lagos had 74 cases, Kazuna 33, Oyo 19, Kano 17, Edo 13, and Zamfara State has 10 new cases, while Ogun, Gombe, and Borno states have 8 each. Others are Bauchi and Kwara states with 7 new cases each. The FCT has 4. Kaduna and Enugu states have three each, while River states has recorded two new cases. Currently, Nigeria has 6,175 cases of COVID-19, with 1,644 discharged, while 191 patients have died of the virus. The House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the extent of government's coordination, supervision and funding of medical and pharmaceutical research in the fight against COVID-19 and other diseases in Nigeria. The issue coming under matters of urgent importance from Deputy Minority Leader Toby Okechukwu seeks the repositioning of medical research in order to develop indigenous solutions to the healthcare needs of the country. A most Motion from Representative Tanko Sununu urging the federal government to ensure protection of and pay salaries to healthcare workers of the FCT was also supported by lawmakers. House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila expressed concern about irregularities in salary payments for the FCT health workers, stressing that the intervention of the House will hopefully arrive at an amicable resolution. The lawmakers also resolved to intervene in the sacking of casual workers by Wari and Kaduna refineries and petrochemical companies in view of the economic implications on those affected amid the coronavirus pandemic. In the meantime, an ad hoc committee has been set up to review the legislative agenda of the House of Representatives in line with present realities. The partial easing of the lockdown by two weeks comes with renewed plans to tackle COVID-19 and these measures are contained in an address by the chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Mayor Ogidi x-rays the address. Like a test run, Nigeria eased its lockdown for two weeks on the 4th of May 2020. And life gradually emerged with stimulus packages to revive the ailing economy by the federal government, such as reduction of interest rates from 9% to 5% for all CBN intervention facilities, 50 billion naira facilities to household and businesses adversely impacted by COVID-19 through NISAL Microfinance Bank, 100 billion naira facility to pharmaceutical and health sector companies to retool their businesses. One trillion naira facility to agri and manufacturing companies to expound and set up new factories and suspension of repayment of all state government loans for one year to give states enough financing room to pay salaries among others. And the first phase of the test run as it were ended and the PTF chair boss Mustafa and his team is here to unveil the next line of action and to answer questions. For the presidential task force, we share your pains, but our future is in the hands of every Nigerian. For the PTF, it is two weeks of mixed bag. That is, the level of compliance with guidelines low, but efforts to curtail the spread high. On the sunny side, there was increase in the number of laboratories in the COVID-19 network from 15 to 26. Additional 15,558 tests were conducted, increase in the number of trained personnel to 11,409 health workers. Procurement and distribution of additional personal protective equipment and ventilators across the country. However, the infection prevention and control activities identified nine high burden local government areas in the Federation, reporting high number of cases and accounting for 
of the total number of infections in the country. And with the briefing received from President Buhari, the status quo on the ease of lockdown still remains for another two weeks to still observe the behavior in the era of the new normal. This means all measures, exemptions, advisories, and scope of entities allowed to reopen under phase one of the eased lockdown shall be maintained across the Federation for another two weeks, effective from 12 midnight, 18th May 2020 to 1st June 2020. Maintain the existing lockdown in Kano State for additional two weeks. In position of precision lockdown in states or in metropolitan I burden local government areas that are reporting a rapidly increasing number of cases when the need arises. This would be complemented with the provision of palliatives and continued re-evaluation of the impact of the intervention and aggressive scale-up of efforts to ensure that communities are informed, engaged and participating in the response with enhanced public awareness in high-risk states. It is a new era that comes with new traditions. And since nobody knows when COVID-19 will be over because science moves at its own pace, the PTF advises state governors to align their state-specific measures with the guidelines issued by the Presidential Tax Force. Onga has no sympathy for anyone, so farming activities must go on. Therefore, PTF reminds the security personnel to consider farmers during their enforcement exercises and see the period with human face. When the finishing line is in sight, the runner puts in more efforts, and that is the task before all Nigerians at this time. Mie Ogidi, NTN News. And now joining us via phone call to speak further on the on phase two of the ease of lockdown is an economic analyst, Mrs. Chimwe Ezenwa. You're welcome to NTA Nationwide. Hello. Mrs. Chimwe, welcome to NTA Nationwide. Thank you very much for having me. Now, ma'am, now that the federal government has decided to sustain the current momentum on measures it put in place, what are the expected spillover effects on the economic sector in the short and long term? Well, um, the COVID-19, as all of us are aware, has really dealt a blow on the economy, whether it's in the short term or in the long term. But with this uh, new measure put in place by the PTF and the spillover effects, it's definitely going to hurt the economy. But one might want to ask, which one comes first? Is it life or the economy? So I think that um, it is in good faith that the federal government has decided to extend the lockdown so that people will learn to respect the guidelines. And the quicker we can respect that, the quicker we can flatten the curve. In the long run, I think we should start planning about post-COVID prosperity, the post-pandemic prosperity, that's what I will call it, the PPP. Mm. Now on we the should all start planning about that. Now, on the flip side, Nigerians have been urging government to totally lift the lockdown. Do you think this is a good idea, taking into account the fact that new cases are being recorded every day? idea. It might be catastrophic. Unless we see how we do the next couple of weeks, how people will learn how to obey the rules. Because most Nigerians really don't know how to obey the rules. Unless we do that, any government that attempts to lift total lockdown is heading for perdition especially here where the, we do not have uh, the adequate infrastructure to weather the health implications. And finally, on post-COVID prosperity, as you call it, which economic sectors should the government pay special attention to for urgent resuscitation? Well, uh, I am a bit biased because I'm a manufacturer. 
one of those that will be classified as an informal sector. The informal sector should, the government should rally around the informal sector immediately if they, they ever think of rescuing the Nigerian economy. Those cottage industries, those women out there struggling to survive, women make at least 65% of the informal sector. The informal sector is the engine of growth of any economy. I think we have to hit the ground running with the informal sector. Enough of the formal sector. Enough, I say, of the formal sector. Let's grab the informal sector. That's what I'll say. Thank you very much, Mrs. Chimwe Ezimwa. Economic. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now to a conspiracy theory relating, related rather to COVID-19. Experts insist that there is no connection between the rollout of 5G communication network and the outbreak of COVID-19. Discussing the 5G technology scare on Good Morning Nigeria, Experts described 5G as a non-ionizing network which evolved from demand for superior technology. Ekimini Williams reports. In the wake of the outbreak of the coronavirus, controversy was stirred by some people claiming that it was a fallout from the evolution of the 5G network. These experts say that there is no scientific basis to ground such claims. They, however, agreed that sustained exposure to radiation can pose a health hazard. All these high-tension cables, it's advised that houses should not be built under them. Uh, the same thing with uh, all these masts. If we, uh, these masts are normally put high up, and when, once they are high up, the effect of radiation actually to the populace that are beneath them uh, is actually less. The experts believe that the 5G network offers potentials that Nigeria can quickly take advantage for technological solutions to businesses and governance challenges. These advantages include unprecedented digital speed, better connectivity for broader range of devices, and reduced lag. Qualities which the experts say can lead Nigeria to the fourth industrial revolution. We'll be able to provide enough security via, via a man area vehicle. And not only that, you, you will be able to actually do what is called signature identification, tracing, and delay. So, with 5G, as as explained also Yella, you have your IP cameras around. You want to monitor what is happening along different roads, monitor a lot of processes, and then do remote control or remote monitoring. And then, not only that, you can apply a lot of artificial intelligence approaches. People don't bother to read the manual. They just switch it on, and it's working. Understand the rule, and play according to the rule. There's always safety. Once you understand the rule, then safety is in your hand. The 5G network is not yet deployed in Nigeria. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. Now, a review of major observations since the commencement of lockdown has led the National Orientation Agency to increase awareness campaigns in 19 states as part of measures to reduce community transmission. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. At the record of the first index case in the country, fear and anxiety ruptured the socio-economic space with continued spread and increasing figures of infections across the country. This led to the declaration of lockdown in Lagos and Ogun states, as well as the FCT, and subsequent enforcement was carried out by state governors with strict restriction on interstate boundaries. As one of the frontline agencies with a mandate of raising awareness against coronavirus pandemic, the observations became necessary for further safety adjustments. As a first a step measure, intensive awareness campaign will be strengthened in 19 states of the Federation, why other safety guidelines will be prioritized to subdue the pandemic. That the directors from the National Orientation Agency headquarters to state directors on COVID-19 have been closely monitored for compliance from the onset with reports being filed in on a daily basis from across the country. 
Well, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, is also joined in the campaign. This time around, efforts will be geared towards the monitoring of distribution of palliatives and emergency relief funds. There should be strict observance of uh, Public Procurement Act, particularly Section 43 you know, of the Act. On you know, emergency procurement. The ICPC is also committed to the supervision of the new management framework for emergency funds approved by the president to ensure transparency. Intermittent assessment from observations by NOA on awareness campaign against COVID-19 is to identify major areas of challenges as well as make necessary amendment in areas of strength as a fight against COVID-19 gets tougher. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. Thank you, Abubakar. You're watching Nationwide on NTA. Let's join Dotum in Lagos for more reports. Thank you, Najahatu. The federal government on Monday extended the gradual easing of the lockdown by two weeks as a measure to combat the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. This extension has elicited divergent views from Lagosians. Adeola Komi Akere reports. In the daily briefing of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 on the 18th of May 2020, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bos Mustafa, said in spite of the progress made, Nigeria is still not ready for a total reopening of the economy until safety measures put in place by the federal government yield the desired results. The current phase of the partial lockdown, which has been extended by another two weeks, is to ensure stricter enforcement with more palliatives for Nigerians and continued re-evaluation of the interventions. With the country having over 6,000 confirmed cases of the virus, some Lagosians say extending the lockdown is for the good of all. Make sure we relax. The, the relax will continue to be gradual, not total. Gradual, as the thing goes, let them relax it gradually and gradually. Gov uh, government can only unlock and unwind when things are better. Because statistics will show that things are getting better. Or, or for unlocking the lockdown. I prefer the extension. Now we're moving around for the coronavirus to spread all about. That one, uh, I think it's, it's, it's necessary because you can look at it very well. People are not wearing masks. They, however, appeal to government at all levels to intensify enlightenment campaigns on the dangers of the coronavirus in communities. In Lagos, Adeola Komiakere, NCA News. The controversy surrounding payment of demurrage on shipment at the Motala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, during the lockdown is gradually being resolved as one of the aviation companies has started granting 80% waiver. In spite of this development, clearing agents and freight forwarders are still asking for 100% waiver. Michael Olaleye reports. It all started at the seaports when a 21-day demurrage and storage fees waiver was granted for shipments received during the lockdown. Beneficiaries are still smiling on this kind gesture, but the rail of hope this has given to business owners at the seaport is missing at the airports. The goods from the seaports never pay demurrage. Why Naco Avions PLC and Saco PLC want the goods from airport cargo to pay demurrage within the same lockdown regime? Unlike the seaport, where the Nigerian Post Authority regulates activities of operators, at the international airport in Lagos, the fate of freight forwarders and clearing agents is in the hands of concessionaires. As a ground handling company, um, we have been able to agree on 80% um, waiver for demurrage incurred during the lockdown. The expectation that the federal government will step in and do something on our own behalf as ground handling companies as well. Although the Minister of Aviation has intervened, the freight forwarders say the present waiver given by the handling companies will hike the cost of goods and affect their availability. We want 100% and we still believe that government will intervene to make this 
a reality. You recall that uh, it's under government directives that all the trading community were asked to stay at home. So it's uh, absurd for somebody to wake up and say we need to pay for staying at home. It is believed that with intensified consultation and compromise, both parties will find a lasting solution to the challenge. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. In other news, the Nigerian Navy ship Baycroft has paraded 10 pirates for allegedly hijacking a Chinese vessel off the coast of Côte d'Ivoire within the Gulf of Guinea. Commander NNS Baycroft, Commodore Ibrahim Shatima, reiterates the Navy's determination to partner agencies like the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the MASA, at ensuring safety within Nigeria's maritime space. Abaladi Salami reports. Out of the 47 attacks recorded by the International Maritime Bureau in the first quarter of 2020, the Gulf of Guinea, a key production of, accounted for 21 attacks and 90% of all kidnappings at sea in 2019. Security agencies are not resting on their oars, but matching their surveillance strategies with criminal antics. And one of these interventions saved the day when some alleged pirates recently carried out their nefarious act on a Chinese vessel MV Alifong 2 off the coast of Cote d'Ivoire, overpowering all 18 passengers on board the vessel. The swift intelligence report made to the Nigerian Navy prompted it to dispatch Nigerian Navy ship Unguru to intercept the vessel. 140 nautical miles off the south coast of Lagos. Use this opportunity to strongly warn the criminal elements that engage in any act of maritime crime within the Gulf of Guinea to desist as the Nigerian Navy has the capability and the willpower to deal with such perpetrators. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency's concern on safeguarding the deep blue sea economy from pirates led to the formulation of an anti-piracy act as centered by the precedents where criminals will be charged. Before now, the issue of prosecution of uh, pirates was a very difficult thing. But now with the act in place, it has made it easier for them to be prosecuted. The Nigerian Navy says regional cooperation with relevant stakeholders in terms of information sharing will be deepened for response capability. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. And that's it from here. Nationwide continues after the break. Do stay with us. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss, and we share your grief. COVID-19, looking inward for alternative medicine, is the focus this week on NTA Tuesday Live. What are the potential in Nigeria for alternative medicine? What are the global best practices on issues of COVID-19? Tune in at 10.30 p.m. for answers and more on NTA Tuesday Live. Don't miss it. It's the dawn of a new era in Makwumi Ogun, waterside local government area of Ogun State, where His Royal Highness of Bakazima Deshino Salami, the all-rounder, continues his remarkable achievements as the Oshobia of Makwumi one year after his official installation in the capacity of the monarch on May 21, 2019. Kabi, you, your reign in the last one year has ignited tremendous development, even now that you anticipate your coronation. Congratulations on Makwumi Oshobia, Iluareye Auruku. 
Arukuto Eyelo. This message is powered by Rotarian Ambassador Martins Ife, President and Founder, First Child and Prisoner Care Foundation. This is a very important message. Oppression, wear your mask, especially for people who are done old. No forget, your body no tranga like before. You not even tranga like your children or your grandchildren. So therefore, always wear your mask for this pandemic period. No they to receive visitors, so even if not your grandchildren. Make extra mask where you go fit wash. Make like two and dash your neighbor one. And if they come out for house, wear your mask always. And if you come back, wash your hand with soap and running water. To avoid coronavirus, make you for live long for your children and your grandchildren. No forget, oppression. Wear, wear your mask, especially for people who don't old. Protect me. I protect you. In a coalition of societies for the right of older persons in Nigeria. Cost dropping. Join body with National Orientation Agency (NOA). Bring on this message. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus. But we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Welcome back to Abuja. Now, monitoring regulatory compliance is often concentrated in urban centers. There is fear that this may constitute a worse scenario if villages are left unmonitored during this pandemic. Ahmed Fulani visited some villages in Ilori to find out what the people know about the ravaging virus and how they are guarding against infection. People of Abadu, a rural community in the Lorry East local government area of Kora State, are aware of the existence of COVID-19. Hence, measures have been taken to prevent themselves from contracting the virus while avoiding handshake and gatherings of large crowd. However, the people are indifferent to the use of face masks. They believe it is applicable only to those who have infected people among them. We have been observed uh not going to church, uh, not uh, crowding, uh, so people have not been, no ceremony, all around, so we have had that. We are just hearing about the virus spreading all over the country's but we have not had any cases here. We don't gather more than five people, and we don't even shake hands. We also distance ourselves from any strangers. This centenarian, Abraham Igunshola, has never experienced this kind of killer disease in his 10 decades of his existence. Since we have not even experienced it before, it is hard for us to know what it is, but we have been told it is a dangerous virus. The head of Apado, Deacon Titus Ajibola, is appreciative of the various palliative support distributed to his people, which brought relief to the community during the total lockdown. From Apado in Ilori East local government area of Kwara State, Ahmed Fulani. Kano State Government has released operational guidelines for the controlled easing of restrictions induced by the coronavirus pandemic as a way of fine-tuning the extended lockdown of Kano State by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 for another two weeks. In a statement by the Commissioner for Information, Malam Muhammad Garba, Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji met with key stakeholders and decided to partially lift the lockdown on Sundays, Wednesdays, 
Wednesdays and Fridays between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., as earlier recommended by the Presidential Task Force. The statement adds that the government considers it convenient to allow the conduct of Eid prayers on Salah Day, along with the lifting of restriction of movement from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. under strict observance of safety and prevention protocols with none of the usual public Salah festivities. Similarly, there will be no central Eid prayer, Derba or Sultan Salah message in Sokoto this year. Sheikh Muhammad Datti reports that Sultan Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar dropped the hint at a meeting with the 86 district heads in the state. Any day central aid prayer was a collective decision of the northern traditional rulers in Nigeria. This is with a view to stopping the influx of people from nooks and crannies of the state to the central aid ground to observe the two record prayers. With this development, the Sultan directed district heads to stop the influx of their masses to the central aid prayer ground. All these are geared towards curtailing the spread of the novel coronavirus. The Sultan said more needs to be done in sensitizing their subjects, emphasizing on the need to adhere strictly to expert advice at all times. While wishing the entire Muslim Ummah a fruitful Ramadan and Eid al-Fitri, the Sultan called for more prayers against the spread of the COVID-19 across the globe. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. And now let's join Chinenye in Enugu for more reports. Hello, Chinenye. Hello, Naja Atu. Good evening and welcome to Enugu. As the Enugu State Palliative and Emergency Committee on COVID-19 continues to distribute food items to residents of the state through various groups, the Enugu chapter of the Radio Television Theater and Art Workers Union, Ratao, has also benefited from the state's gesture. Susan Eze reports. The deputy governor, represented by a member of the Palliative Committee and leader of the State House of Assembly, remarked that government and the media are partners in progress in the fight against COVID-19. Leader of the State House of Assembly appreciated the role of the media in publicizing government's efforts at curbing the pandemic. If you don't what the government is doing, the masses will not know what we are doing. Especially now, we need to tell our people the need to adhere to the health protocols. We can't thank you enough. State Chairman, Radio, Television, Theatre and Arts Workers Union, Enugu Chapter, Ndudi Chude, commended the state government for its dogged fight against the disease in the state. The chairman, who expressed gratitude for the gesture, said it will go a long way in alleviating the current hardship experienced by members. I will um, urge you people not to relax on your past. Meanwhile, we appreciate this as it will go a very long way to fight another pandemic, which is hunger virus. Thank you. The items donated bags of rice, tubers of yam, vegetable oil, tomato paste, and other things. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And in addition to other preventive measures and orders by federal and state governments to kill the spread of coronavirus, a curfew order had been placed in Enugu State. Mina Ukobasi went around the metropolis to monitor the level of compliance with the curfew order. Measures put in place by the Enugu State Government to curtail the spread of COVID-19 is restriction on movement and, of course, curfew. We are here to find out the level of compliance to this curfew order. These motorists are in a hurry to beat the 8 p.m. deadline curfew imposed by the federal government to curb insecurity occasioned by COVID-19. Efforts to speak to most of them proved abortive as they couldn't spare a minute to grant an interview to avert facing the law. We also captured some security personnel who were on ground to enforce the order. Well, we know about the coffee. It's just that we are we are in Enugu State, so I'm trying to go to back to night mile so that I'll back there. I say don't like it when I'm from uh, my office where they post me. They come back. I they do handwork weather, but I see they work for under Enugu State. They got good watch. I know now. I go to my mother for hospital, so I go to my house. In 
Incidentally, we are not the only ones on the prowl to monitor compliance. The news crew ran into the Enugu State Commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps and his men also monitoring and enforcing compliance. Yes, you can see what we are in and uh, we are not relenting. Uh, so this time, whether this time or not this time, so our job is to for hours, more so this material time. This uh, enforcement is uh, fully in place. The 8 to 6 a.m. curfew imposed on states by the federal government is aimed at curtailing community and interstate spread of COVID-19, as well as ensuring security of lives and property at these perilous times. In Enugu, Mena Adobe Kobasi, NTN News. And that is it from here. Najatu is back to you in Abuja for more on Nationwide very much. After several weeks of progressive containment reports, Abia State has recorded a setback with five new COVID-19 cases. Governor Kezi Ikpeazu at a media briefing stated that this development includes the second of two index cases in the state who has yet again tested positive. Neka Ono reports. Cases bring to seven the total number of COVID-19 in Abia State so far. The first of the two index cases has been discharged, while the other is still in isolation. I want to announce to all that um, yesterday evening some results of samples we sent for testing returned and uh, we have five new cases on our hands now. On the latest confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the state, the governor said the three out of the five cases just returned from Lagos, while two are asymptomatic with no travel history. We will reach each and every person that has come into contact with these patients and we will take samples and ensure that they are tested for us to know where we are. The governor stressed that the boundary closure subsists and urged all relevant agencies, especially those whose responsibility it is to mount the boundaries to be extra vigilant, and appealed to those who had contact with the patients to present themselves for testing. In Aba Neka Onu, NTA News. And in Katsina State, the government has distributed no fewer than 19,000 bags of animal feed and eight cartons of salt to livestock farmers in the 34 local government areas of the state. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. Out of the items, each local government area received no fewer than 800 bags of the animal feed and 200 cartons of salt. Briefing newsmen at the event, the secretary to the government of the state, Mustafa Mohammed Inwa, said the animal feeds were given by the federal government as a form of palliative to boost the output of produce by livestock farmers in the state. Especially Fulani living in the front line local government and other people who are engaged in animal uh, rearing and so on. So we have distributed them to each and every local government and also to some individuals, especially involved in large scale uh, animal uh, uh, farming. A sort of palliative measures to the state, especially our concern in the frontline local governments, which have a lot of crisis. Mustafa Inwa said the federal and state governments are committed to improving the growth of agricultural sector as well as threatening farmers' capacity to yield positive output. He therefore urged the beneficiaries to effectively utilize the feeds given to them. Mustafa Inua, who also expressed dismay over the lingering security challenges but filing some of the local government areas of the state, reiterated the state government commitment in bringing to an end the menace. Some of the beneficiaries interviewed expressed the hope that the exercise will be a continuous process. In Katsina, Abdul Malik Hassan, NT News. To contribute their quota to the well-being of society, some core members in Akwaibom State have constructed a disinfection chamber at the Federal Secretariat Complex, Uyo, to assist government curb the spread of the novel coronavirus. John Paul Alumona reports. 
The core members deployed to Aquabom State have continued to make contributions towards the protection of people since the outbreak of COVID-19 in Nigeria. The most recent being the fabrication of a disinfection chamber for civil servants and visitors going into the federal security complex, Uyo. We came together, we worked together with this idea and we were able to work efficiently in our various aspects and to bring this function. So the only issue we can is when there's power failure. As you can see, once the, it releases... It's time now to jump for the Presidential Task Force briefing. Nationwide will continue after. Members, 